Is Jones' warning correct? So what did Brandon Jones actually tell at the conclusion of the NASCAR Xfinity Series race? Want to know then stay tuned to this video on NASCAR Zone till the end. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. So let's begin. Let me know what happened at Martinsville Speedway. Brandon Jones came very close to having his final attempt at qualifying for the NASCAR Xfinity Series Championship race turn into a Hail Mary moment. He was in the lead going into overtime. He had a quick car that started from the pole position, and he appeared to have a friendly rival in team at Ty Gibbs. By the time the checkered flag was waved, Jones had lost his lead, his fast car had become noticeably shorter, and the word teammate was being referred to in the context of air quotes. Gibbs' strong contact on Jones' number 19, Joe Gibbs racing Toyota on the final lap of overtime during Saturday's day on Tools 250 brought an exciting race for the final spot in the championship four down to the wire. Jones' chances of making the playoffs were dashed as a result of the incident. Gibbs was able to celebrate his sixth victory of the season, whilst Jones was eliminated on a day when the only thing that could have kept him in the title race was a victory. But now the table has turned because something great happened to Brandon Jones in the final race with Joe Gibbs Racing. Brandon Jones' final race with Joe Gibbs Racing resulted in an 11th place finish at Phoenix Raceway. Jones's time with GGR came to an end. This would be seeming like a loss to GGR right now, but yet they're one of the best that will race now with motorsports from 2023. Brandon Jones has won victory in NASCAR Xfinity Series and XSN competition at the Phoenix Raceway, where he has competed 13 times. Jones has finished in the top five three times, in the top 10 six times, has led 59 laps, and has a start to finish average of 10.8. Jones came in second place in the event that was held in the spring of this year. In addition to that, he has three starts in the Camping World Truck Series at the Circuit in the Desert. On Saturday at Martinsville, Jones was driving the number 19 Menards Toyota Supra, and he won the pole position and led 98 laps of the race. Jones put in a brave effort throughout many NASCAR overtime restarts to secure a spot in the championship four, but he was forced into the wall as a result of a collision from behind on his final attempt, which resulted in his finishing in 23rd position. If we see other drivers who are affiliated with Joe Gibbs Racing have a combined total of 107 starts in NXS Racing at Martinsville, the drivers have finished the race with a combined total of 14 victories, 47 top 5 finishes, 75 top 10 finishes, 19 pole positions, 3,119 laps left, an 8.2 average starting position, and a 9.3 average finishing position. Daniel Henrik's victory in the 2021 NXS Championship was the team's most recent victory, and it came in the year 2021. Who do you think is the best driver of Joe Gibbs racing till now? Let us know in the comments section below, and do subscribe to our channel for future updates. Because of the attrition that occurred throughout the race at Martinsville, Gibbs was able to add his name to the list of competitors for Championship 4 before the conclusion of the competition. He competed for the Xfinity Championship against his teammates Josh Berry, Noah Gragson, and Justin Allgaier from JRI. After Barry and Gragson secured their spots in the round of eight with victories earlier in the event, AJ Allmendinger and Justin Allgaier engaged in a fierce battle for position in the final laps of the race, with Allgaier emerging victorious. However, how Gibbs got there was the topic of conversation across South Central Virginia. Following a series of late wrecks, the competition was extended by the third period of time, and the two GGR teammates competing in it the current and the lame duck had taken turns picking the low lane for the restarts, which forced the action to be three wide and made full contact bids for the lead and the victory. The final push was sufficient to propel Jones's number 19 super rearward against the outside retaining wall of the track. Gibbs was awarded the Martinsville Grandfather Clock Trophy for the first time, although the home crowd was very vocal in their disapproval of his performance. It was imperative that they win the race. So that aspect of it is what it is. 
but it would have been nice to at least have had the opportunity to race against him and make an effort to keep up with him. The most enjoyable aspect of racing is going door to door and competing against other drivers. It's not enough to simply smash other people. Both Algeyer and Almendinger would be eliminated if Jones had been victorious in the race and gained an automatic berth for himself. The way things turned out, Jones' tragedy was actually a blessing for Algeyer, who finished fifth and won the last spot in the final four by beating out Almendinger, who finished 15th by a score of 12 points. On pit road, he made it a point to console Jones with an embrace and convey his condolences. Algaier referred to the individual as a good friend, regardless of whether or not they will work together in the future. Evidently, this was done for our own good, right? It gets us in, and they've got a shot at going for a title next week at a racetrack that is really, really excellent for us. It did put them in a position where they can win the championship. However, the race was unquestionably one that will go down in the annals of history. It was about as crazy as I can imagine something becoming. Allgaier had a first-hand encounter with the mayhem when he was engaged in a fender-banging war with Almendinger. During the course of the competition, the two drivers kept exchanging positions lap after lap. This melee reached its pinnacle when Almendinger's number 16 college racing Chevrolet slipped and slowed down with a flat left rear tire with just 17 laps remaining in the regular portion of the race. Despite the fact that Almendinger's aspirations of making it back to the championship four were dashed, he maintained a good attitude and shook hands with Allgaier after their intense battle. If Brandon was not ditched by Ty Gibbs, what would be the other scenario? Let us know in the comments section below and do subscribe to our channel for future updates. They were aware that whoever came out on top, regardless of who they defeated, was going to be successful given the way things were playing out at that point. So sure it's a bummer that the tiger got cut down, but he was trying to pinch them to sort of loosen them up and see if he could move him out of the way so he didn't have to. You are aware that this is a potential outcome. In conclusion, we did everything that was in our power. Congratulations to them for making it this far, even though they didn't win. The result creates an uneven playing field for the championship for a race in Phoenix in terms of the teams that will be competing. Three teammates from Junior Motorsports will be competing against Gibbs, who will be the only driver representing his grandfather's team. The next season, Jones would take over for Gregson as the driver of the number nine team. During Gregson's time, the number nine squad had its fair number of scrapes with Gibbs. Gregson added that if he were in the 19 shoes right now, where he wouldn't be smiling and taking selfies next to a clock right now. He would be really, extremely upset right now. He would be back there with some extracurricular activities in mind, but that's not my battle. He just went to express his gratitude that three of Junior Motorsports' cars were able to advance to the final four and his excitement about competing for a title. What thoughts do you have regarding this? Let us know in the comments below. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed it. So, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more of our incredible videos. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.